before you say anything, I know. All right, I know. Ash Wednesday is not the same online. Of all the services that we've had to adjust to doing digitally, this is one of the hardest for me because I appreciate its meaning and its form so much. There's just no way to digitally approximate having ashes imposed on you as a reminder of your mortality, as a symbol of your repentance. There's no way to digitally approximate the intimacy of being touched by another human being, of touching another human being. As a pastor, I especially lament the powerful act of being trusted to be the one imposing those ashes on each of you, of being the person that you have chosen to remind you on this day that you are dust and that to dust you shall return. It's a profound and solemn duty, one that I deeply appreciate and respect and one that this year I miss a lot. We've all had to give up so much this year so much that I've heard people ask the question if we even really need Lent this year because we've already been fasting for 48 weeks. Or if we need Ash Wednesday because this pandemic is just one giant reminder of our mortality. This service is going to be one of the last things that we will have to give up for the first time. Soon we'll be missing out on celebrating Holy Week and Easter again this for the second time just like we did last year. I think it's worth admitting that this observance of Ash Wednesday tonight, like so many other things, it's not how we want it to be. It's not how it should be. To be able to say that, to say that things are not as they should be, to be able to say it with other people, is to have that solidarity with one another in our frustration our disappointment and our sorrow, and that's powerful. Such communal lament is what reminds us that we're not alone in our grief. When we can't make pain go away, feeling the presence of others with us in that pain, knowing that we're not bearing it alone, is at least some comfort. And that, my friends, is why we observe Ash Wednesday every year. We smear ashes on our foreheads and we spend a little bit of extra time in confession of sin and we're reminded that our, of our dustiness because all those things are ways that we have to say together and publicly that things are not as they should be. Most years we're just talking about the normal ills of the world, things like war and disease, poverty and oppression, climate change and mass extinction. But this year, our list includes pandemic and the disruption and the isolation and the grief that that brings with it. In the Bible, folks who wanted to publicly acknowledge that things are not as they should be dress in sackcloth and smear or sprinkle ashes on their heads. It's a visible sign that something is amiss. Often it's a sign of mourning and acknowledgement that someone has died and that that death has altered the world in a fundamental way for the person who is wearing that sign. It can also be a sign of repentance, an admission that I as a person or that we as a community have not been doing the things that we should be, that we've not been being the people we ought to be, that we've recognized that and we're trying to do better. That's the origin of this strange ritual, ritual that we observe every year in February. I think that wearing this physical sign, even if it's only in the church building for an hour or so, it's an important thing for us to do because we have no other way of making that statement. I thought long and hard about what else I could do as a part of this service to take place, take the place of the imposition of ashes this year. And frankly, I came up blank. But there's a good reason for that. Unlike the ancient Hebrews, or even many contemporary cultures, we don't have any cultural signs of mourning or repentance. 
We have all sorts of signs and rituals and traditions for marking celebrations. There's toasts and gift exchanges and dances and parties and receptions. But there's nothing that we do to mark grief or regret or sadness. We have funerals, but even those are beginning to die out, no pun intended, in favor of celebrations of life, because we'd rather celebrate than grieve. We don't think that there's any room for public displays of grief in our society. When my dad died a couple of years ago, I found I couldn't just pretend that everything was fine and go back to life as it had been. I didn't have the desire or the energy to go around crying or frowning all the time, but I needed something to acknowledge that for me, the world was different now, that I was different, that I'd been changed by his death. And I didn't have any sackcloth to wear, and I felt it might be a little bit unhygienic to smear ashes on myself for a long period of time. But I needed some physical sign that I was not the same person I had been before he died. So I ended up kind of accidentally wearing a beard. It's a, it, some of you may remember it. It was a really scraggly, patchy, nasty beard. I intentionally didn't shave it or trim it, except to keep it out of my mouth. I didn't do that because it wasn't a fashion statement. I didn't feel the need to explain it to everybody to say, this is why I'm wearing a beard, but I didn't have to because whether or not people understood it, they knew looking at me that I looked different. And that's all I needed. I just needed something to say that something's changed. Now, nobody likes to dwell on feeling bad, but consider the result of this lack of rituals to acknowledge mourning and repentance in our society. We have no way to publicly express our desire for things to be different, to collectively telegraph our disappointment and our frustration, and to invite people into that sadness and regret with us. And so these things just remain bottled up and unexpressed until they explode in public expressions of anger and outrage, like polarization and bigotry and protests and violence. That doesn't seem healthy to me. Ash Wednesday is one of the few times and the few ways that we have to acknowledge before God and everyone in the world that this world is not the way it should be. It's one of the few times and the few ways we have to express that this makes us feel sadness and regret and even shame. It's our opportunity to take off the smiles that we have plastered on our faces all the time for a moment and to remind ourselves and everyone around us that sometimes the world is kind of a mess, that sometimes that's partly our fault. Even this pandemic, a relatively random and unavoidable fluke of nature, has been made much, much worse by governmental mismanagement and poor messaging, and the selfishness and denial and fear of ordinary people like you and me. Maybe you've even been a part of that. But lamenting like this in a community is not just about giving space to our feelings of disquiet. When we express our disappointment that things are not as they ought to be, we are also expressing hope. Hope that there is a way that things should be. That there is some entity or some force or some will out there in the universe that has the right and the authority to determine the way things ought to be. And so, as counterintuitive as it might seem, lament is fundamentally an expression of hope a hope that there is a greater truth that exists beyond all of us, that is bigger than all of us, that life is not all just a bunch of relativistic perspectives. Ash Wednesday and the imposition of ashes invites us for a moment into that hope, into that hope for a vision of a world that is better and kinder and more just and loving than the one that we have. 
these things give us that hope that this vision isn't just in our heads, that it's real, that it exists even if we don't live up to that vision. We acknowledge on this day that we are not gods, that we are only creatures formed out of dust, waiting to return to dust. And when we do that, we are acknowledging that although we are not gods, there is one who is greater than us, who holds and casts that vision for us, and who promises a place in it. The invitation made to us in the season of Lent is to recommit ourselves to that vision, to turn from all the things in this life that we use to distract and anesthetize ourselves from the pains and the difficulties of this world so that we can stare those things in the face and that we might hope for a world in which those things no longer have any power over us. We're invited to strengthen our spiritual practices or take up new ones to remind ourselves to look toward that vision of a better world. And also, frankly, to see the ways that we fail to live up to that vision. The cross of ashes that we smear on our foreheads this, each year, it's not alone. That cross always sits on top of another cross, one that was marked there at our baptism. The ashes just make up, excuse me, the, the ash cross just makes that first cross visible, just as our failures make visible the vision to which we cannot live up. And that making visible is a grace, not just for us, but for everybody. It reminds us who we are and whose we are. That even when that first cross is tarnished and soiled by our shortcomings, it's still there. The cross of ash is a sign that the ways that we fail God's vision do not negate that vision itself. That it still exists. That it's still real, whether or not we are helping it. Just like that ash cross, our spiritual practices make that vision visible to us and to the people around us. They remind us that the divine love has a claim on us. That, yeah, we may be dust, but we are dust that has been ordered and formed and brought to life by the divine love that is still working to bring order and form to this world, to bring life to this world as well. They remind us that while we are between dusts, we have been given the capacity and the responsibility to share that life with which our Maker has imbued us. So yes, tonight is not the same as it has been. It's not the way it should be. We're not able to celebrate it like we would like to or like we should. But to be honest, I think that this discordant observance of Ash Wednesday kind of makes the point just as clearly as the Ash Cross as we normally put on our heads. Just the same as those practices of prayer and fasting and charitable giving that mark our lives as Christians, hopefully our entire lives, but especially during Lent. Even if this isn't the way it ought to be, today we still enter into the season of Lent, and we still remember that the world is not the way it ought to be, at least not yet. <laughs>